Imagine a routine flight suddenly turning into a harrowing race against time, where split-second decisions mean the difference between life and death. On January 15, 2009, U.S. Airways Flight 1549 collided with a flock of geese, causing a catastrophic dual-engine failure. With New York City looming below and no airports within reach, Captain Chesley Sully Sullenberger made an audacious choice to land on the frigid waters of the Hudson River. In this gripping documentary, witness the extraordinary events of that fateful day, hear firsthand accounts from the brave crew and passengers, and discover how a moment of unparalleled skill and calm averted disaster, turning tragedy into the miracle on the Hudson. On the morning of January 15, 2009, the crew of U.S. Airways Flight 1549 was busy preparing for a routine departure from LaGuardia Airport in New York City. Captain Chesley Sully Sullenberger and First Officer Jeffrey Skiles conducted thorough pre-flight checks, ensuring that all systems were operational and the aircraft was ready for the journey to Charlotte, North Carolina. Passengers boarded the Airbus A320, stowed their belongings, and settled into their seats unaware that they were about to become part of aviation history. The flight attendants completed safety demonstrations and final preparations, setting the stage for what seemed like a standard takeoff on a clear winter day. U.S. Airways, once a major American airline, operated over 3,000 flights daily to destinations across the United States, Canada, Mexico, Europe, the Caribbean, and Latin America. Founded in 1937 as All-American Aviation, it underwent several transformations and mergers, most notably with America West Airlines in 2005. Known for its comprehensive domestic network and a growing international presence, U.S. Airways played a significant role in the airline industry until its merger with American Airlines in 2013, which created the world's largest airline. Renowned for its commitment to safety and customer service, U.S. Airways left a lasting legacy in aviation history. LaGuardia Airport, located in the borough of Queens in New York City, is one of the major airports serving the metropolitan area. Named after Fiorello LaGuardia, a former mayor of New York City, the airport is known for its convenient proximity to Manhattan, just about 13 kilometers, eight miles away. Opened in 1939, LaGuardia primarily handles domestic flights and is a hub for several major airlines. Despite its compact size and older infrastructure compared to other airports, LaGuardia is a vital gateway for travelers, with ongoing renovations aimed at modernizing its facilities and improving passenger experience. U.S. Airways Flight 1549 had a planned flight time of approximately one hour and 50 minutes from LaGuardia Airport in New York City to Charlotte Douglas International Airport in North Carolina. After a scheduled stopover in Charlotte, the continuation of the journey to Seattle-Tacoma International Airport in Washington would have taken roughly five hours and 30 minutes. Thus, the total flight time for the entire trip, including the stopover, would have been around seven hours and 20 minutes covering a total distance of about 4,640 kilometers. 2,884 miles. The aircraft is an Airbus A320-214 with CFM 56 engines and serial number 1044. The aircraft registration, tail number, is N106US. Its first flight was on June 15, 1999, and it was delivered to U.S. Airways in August 1999. It has completed 16,299 flights. The most recent maintenance check conducted every 550 flight hours was on December 6, 2008. The Airbus A320 type has a water landing control knob 
designed to close all valves and doors under the aircraft's fuselage to limit the rate of water ingress into the aircraft. The A320 series is widely used around the world, praised for its advanced aerodynamics, fly-by-wire control system, and comfortable cabin layout. The CFM 56 engines are highly regarded in the aviation industry, combining high performance with low fuel consumption and reduced noise levels. Captain Chesley Sully Sullenberger, aged 57 at the time, commanded the flight. A seasoned aviator, he transitioned to commercial flying after serving as a fighter pilot in the United States Air Force from 1980. With an impressive total of 19,663 flight hours under his belt, including 4,765 hours, specifically on the Airbus A320, Captain Sullenberger was not only a proficient glider pilot, but also an authority in aviation safety. Assisting him as the first officer, age 49, was Jeffrey Skiles. While he had accumulated 15,643 flight hours over his career, including limited experience of 37 hours on the A320, this marked his inaugural assignment as a pilot flying the A320. Accompanying them were 150 passengers and three flight attendants ready for the journey. Captain Sully, who has been flying for U.S. Airways up to this point, has been with the airline for 28 years, making him a remarkable individual. Chesley Burnett Sullenberger III was born on January 23, 1951, in Denison, Texas, to a family with Swiss-German ancestry. Growing up on a street named after his mother's family, Sullenberger developed an early fascination with aviation, often building model planes and carriers. His passion for flying ignited after witnessing military jets from a nearby Air Force base. Excelling academically, he consistently ranked in the 99th percentile in every academic category and was admitted to Mensa International at the age of 11. During high school, he held leadership roles in various clubs, including president of the Latin Club, and was an accomplished flutist. He graduated near the top of his class of approximately 350 students from Denison High School in 1969. At 16, he began flight training in an Aronka Champion 7DC near his home, an experience that greatly influenced his aviation career. Sullenberger pursued higher education, earning a Bachelor of Science degree from the United States Air Force Academy, followed by master's degrees in industrial organizational psychology from Purdue University in 1973, and in public administration from the University of Northern Colorado in 1979. Captain Sullenberger boasts an impressive aviation career spanning over 50 years. He accumulated more than 20,000 hours of flight time while working for U.S. Airways and its predecessors, including Pacific Southwest Airlines, acquired in 1988. His extensive qualifications include an airline transport pilot certificate for various aircraft, single and multi-engine, a commercial pilot license for gliders, and a flight instructor certificate for both airplanes and gliders, covering single, multi-engine, and instrument flight. After receiving clearance, the flight departed LaGuardia Airport's runway 4 at 3.24 p.m. EST, 8.24 p.m. UTC, climbing northeasterly. Under Skyla's command, the plane ascended steadily. Their first report after becoming airborne at 3.25 p.m. EST indicated they were at 700 feet, 210 meters, and continuing to climb. 
At 2.51 p.m., visibility was 10 miles, 16 kilometers, with broken clouds at 3,700 feet, 1,100 meters, and wind was blowing at 8 knots, 9.2 miles per hour, 15 kilometers per h from 290 degrees. An hour later, conditions improved with few clouds at 4,200 feet, 1,300 meters, and wind at 9 knots, 10 miles per hour, 17 kilometers per h from 310 degrees. As the aircraft ascended, the captain began receiving altitude instructions from air traffic control, ATC. Taxi 1549, contact air departure today. Good day. Taxi 1549, air departure to contact, I maintain 15,000. Maintain 15,000, Taxi 1549. Autopilot engagement followed the captain's acknowledgement of ATC instructions. The pilots maintained communication with ATC to guide the aircraft out of LaGuardia Airport's airspace. Jack, this 15.9, turn left lane 270. As the plane executed a left turn instructed by ATC, engines out, the captain swiftly switched to manual control and prioritized restoring power to the flight control systems and computers. The backup generator was activated to replace the engines and powering the flight control systems and computers. Okay, uh, you need to return to low body. Turn left heading of uh, 220. As the captain maneuvered the aircraft into a controlled descent, the first officer simultaneously activated the engine fire suppression system. The flames engulfing both engines were gradually brought under control. 220. With all thrust lost, the aircraft descended rapidly. The pilots fought to maintain control and find a suitable landing spot. However, the task was immensely challenging as the terrain below was densely populated and returning to the airport seemed nearly impossible. As the Hudson River emerged before them, the captain swiftly made a decision and informed ATC that he was considering a water landing in the river. At 1529, we can get it if you want to try to land 1913. We're able, we may end up in the Hudson. As the aircraft turned towards the Hudson River, the passengers within peered out the windows, each one understanding the fate that lay before them, a water landing. Instead of screams, the air was filled with silent prayers. The cabin crew sprang into action, guiding passengers to the life jackets stored beneath their seats, ensuring that even the youngest and most elderly were properly equipped. Despite the imminent water landing, the captain's mind was still grappling with the potential consequences. A landing in the Hudson River would likely result in the aircraft's catastrophic damage or even disintegration. Moreover, the presence of residual fuel posed a significant fire hazard. With a lingering sense of uncertainty, he inquired with ATC about the possibility of diverting to a nearby airport. Runway 4 is available if you want to make left traffic to runway 4. ADX, okay, I'm not sure we're making runway. Uh, what's over to our right? Anything in New Jersey, maybe Teterboro? Okay, yeah, off your right side is Teterboro Airport. Upon receiving the captain's request, ATC at LaGuardia Airport swiftly reached out to their counterparts at Teterboro Airport, initiating the necessary preparations for an emergency landing. Do you want to try to go to Teterboro? Yes. Tito, uh, Empire, actually, LaGuardia departure guy, emergency inbound. Hey, guys. Tack is 1529 over the George Washington Bridge, wants to go to the airport right now. Going to our airport, check. Does he need assistance? Uh, yes, he, uh, it was a bird strike. Can I get him in for, uh, runway one? Runway one, that's good. Tack is 1529, turn right 280, you can land bird runway strike. one at Tito. We can't do it. Okay, which runway would you like at Tito? We're going to be in the Hudson.
Permission was given for Teterboro's runway one. Sullenberger initially responded yes, but then we can't do it. We're going to be in the Hudson. I'm sorry, say again, Cactus. Despite the clearance for landing at Teterboro Airport, the pilot recognized the aircraft's inability to reach the destination due to the loss of all thrust in the dangerously low altitude. With a resolute decision to land in the Hudson River, he disconnected from ATC and focused on the momentous landing that would soon shake the world. Instructing passengers to brace for impact, Sullenberger issued a command over the cabin address system. Flight attendants echoed the message, ensuring all on board were prepared for a potential emergency landing. Meanwhile, air traffic controllers sprang into action, contacting the Coast Guard. Their urgent request was to warn vessels in the Hudson River and mobilize them for potential rescue operations. Alarmed by the sight of an aircraft approaching the city, concerned citizens contacted the police, fearing a potential terrorist attack reminiscent of the tragic events of 9-11. At 1530, U.S. Airways Flight 1549 made an unpowered ditching in the Hudson River, descending at 125 knots, 140 miles per hour, into the middle of the river. The plane impacted the water with a 9.5 degrees pitch angle and a descent rate of 750 feet per minute. The crew evacuated the passengers through the overwing window exits and inflatable slide rafts but the evacuation was delayed due to water entering the plane through a hole in the fuselage and open cargo doors. Some passengers were knee deep in water, while others stood on the wings or swam away from the plane. The air and water temperatures were around 19 degrees Fahrenheit, minus seven degrees Celsius, and 41 degrees Fahrenheit, five degrees Celsius, respectively. Eventually, all passengers were evacuated and some passengers even helped with the evacuation before jumping into the river and swimming to safety. After the plane ditched in the Hudson River, two NY Waterway ferries arrived quickly and began rescuing passengers using a Jason's cradle. Other boats, including U.S. Coast Guard vessels, also arrived on the scene. Captain Sullenberger instructed the ferry crews to rescue those on the wings first, as they were in greater danger than those on the slides. The last person was taken from the plane at 1555. A total of 140 New York City firefighters responded to the nearby docks, as well as police, helicopters, and various vessels and divers. Medical help was also provided on the Weehawken side of the river, where most passengers were taken. Passengers and crew suffered a total of 100 injuries, including five serious injuries. Many passengers received medical treatment for minor injuries and hypothermia, and some were hospitalized overnight. The airline later provided each passenger with a letter of apology, compensation for lost baggage, and a refund of their ticket price. Some passengers also received offers of $10,000 each in exchange for not suing U.S. Airways. In the aftermath of the crash, many passengers and rescuers experienced post-traumatic stress symptoms, including sleeplessness, flashbacks, and panic attacks. Captain Sullenberger was hailed as a hero for his role in the crash, and he reflected on the experience in an interview, saying that his years of training and experience had prepared him to make a successful water landing. The crash also led to a response to prevent similar accidents in the future. In an effort to reduce the risk of bird strikes, 
Officials captured and exterminated 1,235 Canada geese in New York City and coated 1,739 goose eggs with oil to smother the developing goslings. As of 2017, 70,000 birds had been intentionally killed in New York City as a result of the ditching. The aircraft itself, N-106 U.S., was purchased by the Carolinas Aviation Museum, now renamed Sullenberger Aviation Museum, in Charlotte, North Carolina, where it is on display along with its engines. The partially submerged plane was towed to the pier near the World Financial Center in Lower Manhattan and later taken to New Jersey by barge. The left engine was recovered from the riverbed on January 23rd. The initial investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, found that the plane had lost thrust due to a bird strike, which was later confirmed by analysis of the cockpit voice and flight data recorders. The investigation found that two days before the accident, the aircraft had experienced a compressor stall on the right engine, but it had restarted and the flight was completed. A faulty temperature sensor was found to be the cause of the compressor stall. The NTSB found evidence of damage from a soft body impact in the right engine and organic debris, including a feather. Both engines were sent to the manufacturer for examination and were found to have sustained significant damage. The bird remains were later identified as Canada geese, which typically weigh more than engines are designed to withstand ingesting. The European Aviation Safety Agency, EASA, and the Bureau of Inquiry and Analysis for Civil Aviation Safety, BEA, also joined the investigation, with technical assistance from Airbus and GE Aviation slash SNECMA, respectively. The NTSB used flight simulators to test the possibility that the flight could have returned safely to LaGuardia or diverted to Teterboro, but only one of the two simulated returns to Teterboro was successful. The NTSB ultimately ruled that Captain Sullenberger had made the correct decision in ditching the plane in the Hudson River, reasoning that the checklist for dual engine failure is designed for higher altitudes when pilots have more time to deal with the situation. The board also noted that simulations showed that attempting to return to LaGuardia would have likely killed everyone on board and more on the ground. The National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, issued its final report on the miracle on the Hudson accident on May 4, 2010. The report concluded that the probable cause of the accident was the ingestion of large birds into each engine, which resulted in an almost total loss of thrust in both engines. The report credited the outcome to four factors. One, good decision-making and teamwork by the cockpit crew, including decisions to immediately turn on the auxiliary power unit, APU, and to ditch in the Hudson River. Two, the Airbus. A 320 is certified for extended overwater operation which meant that it carried life vests and additional raft slides, even though they were not required for that specific route. Three, the performance of the flight crew during the evacuation. Four, the proximity of working vessels to the ditching site, which allowed for a quick and effective response. Contributing factors included good visibility and fast response times from the ferry operators and emergency responders. The crew of US Airways Flight 1549 received widespread recognition and accolades for their heroic actions in safely landing the plane on the Hudson River. An NTSB board member called the ditching the most successful in aviation history, while New York State Governor David Patterson dubbed it a miracle on the Hudson. U.S. President George W. Bush and President-elect Barack Obama praised the crew's skill and heroism. The crew received several awards, including the Master's Medal from the Guild of Air Pilots and Air Navigators, the Keys to the City from New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, and Certificates of Honor to the Rescuers. The crew received a standing ovation at the Super Bowl Thirt, and Sullenberger threw the ceremonial first pitch of the 2009 Major League Baseball season. Passengers organized a thank you luncheon for emergency responders, attended by various organizations and personnel. Sullenberger was named Grand Marshal for the 2010 Tournament of Roses Parade in Pasadena, California.
The Miracle on the Hudson incident has been featured in various forms of media. Sullenberger's memoir, Highest Duty, My Search for What Really Matters, was adapted into the feature film, Sully, directed by Clint Eastwood, starring Tom Hanks as Sullenberger and Aaron Eckhart as Skiles. The film was released in 2016. The incident was featured in an episode of the TV show, May Day, titled Hudson River Runway, in season 10, episode five. The event was also featured in an episode of the TV show, Why Planes Crash, in season one, episode one. The incident was featured in the 2020 animated short film, Hudson Geese, directed by Bernardo Brito. The 2010 song, A Real Hero by College, Feet Electric Youth, is written about the incident. These various forms of media have helped to keep the miracle on the Hudson incident in the public consciousness and to continue to honor the bravery and heroism of Sullenberger and his crew.